Hey, thanks for uh, joining me today. <clears throat> hey, yeah, there he is, Yelger. Is it is it is it Jelger or Yelger, like with a Y? with a Y. That's what my wife said. I was pronouncing it like, I don't know, like with a J, <laughs> like Joel or something, but no, it's with the Y. I'm glad I asked. She, uh, she's the one that suggested that it was possibly with a Y. I was like, no, it can't be. And I thought, you know what, of course it is, because uh, that would mean I was wrong. I'm more wrong than the right, so. With the Y, Yelger. See, now I know for sure. How'd your day go, man? I know it's what, 11 p.m.? Netherlands? 11 p.m., is that right? So I basically, I have a, uh, <clears throat> a Mama Z sketch cover that I'm working on today. Thanks everybody for joining me. Me and Yelger got the party started. <laughs> Make sure to call him Yol. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so this is the Mama Z sketch cover, wraparound cover for the La Muerta Onslaught sketch cover rewards tier. Uh, I was really feeling how it was coming out earlier today, so I just started kept I kept outlining and doing the I you know just do the line work. It's almost like a coloring book in the sense that I don't fill any rendering or uh, you know add any shadows or blacks. And I was like, yeah, this is current. This turned out pretty cool. Maybe I'll um, I'll stream the actual inking of it and uh, test out more of the streaming stuff because we're trying to. Uh, just finished shooting a Frankenstein based toy photo with some Muppets. That's pretty cool. Wow. So like do you have to like do you like um do you use like toy uh environments? Oh, that's a bad example, okay, like Castle Grey Skull or like a G.I. Joe base or do you like build little sets f f for your toys?
I don't know how I, I managed to, um, I really was digging the pose that I had going on here and uh, it was just going well in the composition and I don't know how I managed to not do the head first. Hey, Dylan, Dylan Davison. I'm chiming in, but unfortunately just got a phone call and I have to go, but I promise to be. <laughs> of course, man, no worries. Thanks for even popping in. These, I'm, I'm still just trying it out, man. Just seeing how it goes, you know? Uh, but thank you for stopping by. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah, I have to do these anyway, so I'm, I'm drawing them out now too, right now. Yeah, I, I actually, um, I worked out this pose really well, but I didn't have the head completely drawn in. I grab whatever I have lying around the house or use the snake tank. Oh, shit, use the snake tank. Oh, for your, right. Well, that's weird. That's kind of cool. All right, Dylan, yeah, take care, Dylan. Have a great weekend. Um, That's cool, Yelger. You do all that. Do you ever use like uh, do you ever use like dry ice for your uh, toy photo shoots? Ooh, what if I give her some like? What do you think if I put some deer antler type things on this Mama Z sketch card? Like she's got like a, a crown or something. Would that be kind of cool? Or would that be too much like hella? We think. Yeah. No. We we'll use a snake tank. Still on my list to use dry ice. Yeah, that'll be cool. You should try it. That'd be pretty neat. Hey, what do you think, y'all girl, on these? Uh, should I give her some? This is Mama Z, right? So she's like, you know, posing on this crazy death chair. But I, I decided to give her like these little horns, like, I don't know, uh, almost like elk horns or something with like a human skull thing here. Or is that too much like Hella? Should I add it or delete it? So is it pretty hot for you over there right now, Yoga? Or is it, what's the, what, what's the, uh, what's the weather like for you right now? Gives her a bit of a biking vibe, which is cool. All right, so I'll keep the horns. See, I didn't know if they were too much like Hella, you know? Um, but it's cool to give her cool accessories that reflect the same qualities about the character, you know? I always felt like the Mama Z character was kind of like an evil pop queen where she's always got some over-the-top clothes and stuff like that. But she's just really evil. Seventy-three. Is that your? Would you say is that? Is it normally like hot or cold where you live? Like I don't know anything about the mountain. Seventy-three.
Normal for the time of year. Too hot for me. LOL, I like it cold. You're not old enough yet. You're going to start hating the cold. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I always just hear old people don't like the cold. So. I, 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 I think I would prefer hot over cold. But even you know what? 7.3, that's nice, dude. That's really nice. Um, it's like... Uh, I don't know what it is Celsius, but like over here, it's like 85 and maybe, I don't even know, 90 in certain areas where I live. Yeah, I'm doing the streaming thing here, and then um, probably going to try and start doing a few um, warm-up sketches using <clears throat> the Instagram streaming feature, um, and have that be, I guess, like a different kind of sketch stuff, you know? Just exploring all the different platforms and seeing what which ones work best or which ones people are responding to more maybe when it's 85 we call it a heat wave <laughs> yeah that man it must be it must be like like really cold when it's cold over there for you right i mean I can't even imagine. Like here, when it's cold, it'll be like, again, I don't know Celsius, but it'll be like, um, 50 something, maybe? I don't know. It's not that cold, I guess. But Fahrenheit, that is. Sorry. But generally, it probably gets hotter here than, than, than where you're at, so. Working as a gardener five days a week, it ain't fun working outside in those temperatures. No shit. Yeah, I can imagine. Do you, do you frequent a, a, like a comic book shop, Younger, or do you like get your books online? Hey guys, thanks for joining me and Yelger. <laughs> We're hanging out, uh, chatting it up, drawing a Mama Z sketch cover for the La Muerta Onslaught Kickstarter rewards tier. I was telling Yelger earlier, um, hey, Mark, good to see you, man. I know, nice surprise to wake up to, right? It's him again, that guy, he's still drawing those, he's still scribbling. <laughs> You feeling better, man? I hope you are. That was funny with your cat yesterday. He was looking on disapprovingly, like he was waiting to give me the, the thumbs down, the paw down.
in winter it's like lightly below 50 Fahrenheit during the day and like 30, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's cold, dude. That's kind of cold. Yeah, 30 is like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know feel that. that. That's real nope for me right there. I guess I just like warmer weather. But even then, I mean, it's, I'm not, it's, I'm like, like, eh, you know, when it gets too hot. So it's not like it's my favorite. Yeah, generally here, it, it gets like, uh, high 60s and, and low 80s is the general temperature here. Oh, he's just been yelling at my partner for food. He loved your work yesterday. No, feeling so great today. Meds will change that soon, I hope. That sucks, Mark. I hope. Yeah, that sucks. But I mean, hey, at least the worst, hopefully, is behind you. You don't have to uh, have another procedure done. Um, but I thank you for joining us, man. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll uh, entertain you enough to where uh, it distract you from all that stuff. Yogurt says, I get my comics from online comic shops. All coffee comics are straight to the Kickstarters and the coffee comics shop. Yeah, I was thinking about that yesterday. I should figure out, like, well, how do I... I mean, maybe I, maybe because I'm older. Like, I don't really... I'll occasionally go into a comic book store, but more out of, like, just... Just kind of browsing. Like, I don't have a real need to... I don't go on a weekly basis kind of thing, you know? And I was curious, like, it feels like with... Well, I mean, with COVID, but in general, it seems like it's become so much easier now to just get your comics uh, through the mail, just like everything else, right? Um, I was trying to get a sense of that, where people are, where they're getting their books, you know? Where do you get your books, Mark? Do you go to a comic book store normally, or do you, like, uh, do you just order them? online and stuff like that. <laughs> Giving Mama Z this sinister looking, uh, Antler crown, you know, kind of weird. Almost like some sort of ritualistic thing. Sadly, another procedure is on the radar, but a very welcome distraction. Speaking of my distractions, I did get my very first La Muerte yesterday. Got the Desperado homage turn up while I wait for the TVBs and onslaught from the Kickstarter. I get mine from Kickstarter, eBay, local stores, online sellers. Love the hunt. Yeah, that's cool. Well, dude, thank you for picking or getting that La Muerta book. I'm curious to see what you, how it reads for you, you know? But no, I mean, I was just thinking about how people go about getting their books. Like, where do they get, how do they, what are their habits? And I feel like more than ever, people are just buying stuff online. It's just easier. Um, and like I said, with COVID and all that, it just seemed like it boosted that behavior more to to you know have people doing it that way you know what i mean and since i don't really um i don't really go to a comic book, comic book store as often as i used to i used to just get all my books at shows because i was doing so many shows i would just wait till i saw that one guy i always saw the same couple of guys and they recognized me and so I would just be like, hey, what you got, you know? Um, but that's me, you know, I'm just trying to figure out where people get their books. Hey, we've got some new people joining us. Thanks for joining us. We're working on a La Muerta Onsat sketch cover. This is a wraparound sketch cover from the rewards tier that was featured in the Kickstarter and this character is Mama Z. Um, and so I kind of gave her this really cool 
uh, sitting in like a throne, right? Maybe some really old looking throne, kind of Aztec Mayan feeling with a bunch of skeletons around her. Um, you know, and I thought I'd take the opportunity uh, to continue. Beth and I are trying to figure out the streaming thing to be able to do it at, on Facebook simultaneously with uh, YouTube and I messed it up because I didn't get home in time to help have her set it up on both, but we just decided to use it as a chance to practice the streaming on here uh, with you guys. Jason Hart, what up, dude? Hope you're all right. Getting your rest in at home while you're on your little break. I get my books from you. I know you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You get all your books from me. Uh, but no, I was asking everybody, like, how they shop, where they shop, like, because I don't really shop at comic book stores. I know you probably go all over the place. I've seen you buy blanks from the stores and obviously you order online and everything, but well, yeah, that's cool. Thanks for uh, checking us out, Jason. Online saves me the hassle of going through the bins, looking for that one specific issue. But that's fun sometimes for people, right? I mean, if you like doing that and then you like get nosy and find something you wouldn't have thought of anyway. I restarted collecting through COVID with idle hands. Been two decades and felt the itch. I'm just about to hit 200 covers again since it restarting in August last year. Damn, look at you, more getting busy with the comic bookness. What, what, what would you say is one of your favorite new books that you picked up where you went like, oh, I'm glad I, I, I came across this. Oh, look, that says she got restream going. Just needed a couple more minutes to set up for next time. Yeah, I messed it up because I didn't give us enough time to set up. Yeah, man, chilling, watching Tannis Jr. documentary. What is that? I don't know what Tannis Jr. is. Is that a, an athlete type thing? It was funny, yesterday I was, uh, I hit shops all over the country. Yeah, you do. You go all over the place with your job. Jason Hart, one of my buddies here on this, watching the stream, he does, uh, installs solar panel type things. He's always traveling everywhere. Sure shot for the Padres out there by you. Yeah, I don't know. The Padres are really popular right now, man. I, I don't even follow baseball, and I just know it's such a big deal. I see so many of those brown and yellow ball caps and all these, like, Padre jerseys everywhere, you know? And I was like, man, they must be doing good because I, I don't even watch the Padres, and yet they're all over the place right now. I remember Jim was a big Padres fan, Jim Lee. I think he's a Dodgers fan now, though. It was fun. Uh, <clears throat> one year when I was at Wildstorm, Jim uh, bought a lot of, I mean, he just bought a bunch of tickets, or, you know, uh, he bought us all tickets to go see a game, the Padres game, and uh, I, I'm not a Sports, really a sport. I mean, I'm not a baseball guy. And I hadn't, oh man, I hadn't been to a baseball game um, since maybe I was like 15 or 16. So in uh, 08, 09, I went to a baseball game, the Padres, their park, and it was insane. It was like really like epic. They had like microbrew places and they had like fancy like brick oven pizzas and they had like a bar that like sat up against the back of like the home run area and it was just wild what they can do now with these uh stadiums and how they immerse you in the the thing the sport and man i've never seen so many like 20 dollar beers in a plastic cup they got a young team they kill in the division that's what i hear jason that's what i hear i usually get distracted by the toys in comic book stores Yogurt says, "Yeah, dude, remember? 
Remember when Todd's toys first came out and how like obnoxiously uh, eye grabbing they were? Like anything, it didn't matter what it was, he'd be like, oh shit, look at that Resident Evil toy. And he was just like the first guy doing these really cool looking um, detailed toys back in the day, you know? Um, that was wild. Mark says, I jumped back into LD, Lady Death, with Chaos. My partner stumbled across what started it all for me as a film, which was Images Prophet by Rob Liefeld. That's a good book. Other bits of Chaos, like Purgatory, Chastity, Bad Kitty, Undertaker. Got my first Marvel comics with Star Wars. Princess Leia. Wow, 75% Lady Death. That's a big comic book collector or big lady death comic collector that's cool man i caught two brewers games while in wisconsin jason says definitely better in person and yeah best 20 <laughs> I, just, I can't get over the expensive ass beers at these sports sporting events i saw well because where we lived i mean the one thing i would have gone to see I, I did go see when they were here there was like the chargers san diego chargers football games but the stadium was kind of eh, one of the best stadium um but it feels like baseball is more laid back and like um, it's not as frantic. It seems more like not a philosophical game, but it's just it's just easier on the on the on the nerves, right? Like it doesn't seem so uh, frantic. If that makes any sense, like you could go and like with a friend to watch a baseball game and talk and like hear each other, you know, <laughs> where if you go to like baseball or like basketball, like it's not the same, right? I don't really go to sporting events. Saints in New Orleans. Yeah. Who that going to beat them? Them Saints, right, Jason? Saints are huge. They're a big team though. Baseball outfit, La Muerta. That's cool. You, uh, you remember? Oh God, what is it? The war. You might be too young, but uh, <laughs> the movie The Warriors. Uh, they had like uh, uh, these really weird-looking baseball players with face paint. I guess they were a gang too. Um, that's immediately what I thought of when you said baseball outfit, La Muerta. Um, I'm gonna try and change your look up a little bit, uh, just to freshen it up. Not, not like uh, it'll still thematically be the same thing but maybe it will be um like a different kind of outfit or something you know that's a good movie the warriors like you couldn't make a movie like that nowadays man can you dig it? <laughs> I remember the Warriors. Absolutely, that would be epic. Thanks for thinking I'm too young for that. <laughs> Keeping me a fan, Joel. I don't know, Mark. I mean, you know, I'm old. I'm like an old saddlebag. When you see my face, you're like, damn, look at all those wrinkles. No, I mean, I'm, I'm not that old, but I'm, I'm not young either, though. I'm old enough to remember the Warriors. How about that? Mm. All right, so I, I kind of killed some of this time because I forgot to um, draw this face in first. Like, I, I got real excited about the pose, and I saw that through before I finished the... Uh, the head. These new blanks are killer. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, I've been trying hard, man. I really, I just want them to be nice so that when people uh, see them and they find that there may be another La Muerta Kickstarter coming up, they'll consider, you know, possibly getting one. Because they're just, they're cool. They're cool to, to do. Fun movie, The Warriors. Yeah, it was. It was really fun. Like I said, I mean, it was like um, 
You couldn't make a movie like that. That, that one and uh, Escape from New York, for some reason, they kind of all have the same kind of thing for me. I like both of them. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's a cool pose. I, I, I had it uh, in my head one day. I was running and I kept thinking about it. And I laid it out real quick to see if I could land it. And when it started coming out okay, I thought, you know what? Uh, just keep outlining it and maybe we can use it as a streaming piece, you know? Did you guys ever see um, John Carpenter's The Thing when it came out? Now, I mean, we, we, we probably all have seen it, right? Um, but like when you're a kid, do you remember seeing that one? I saw that one as a kid and that messed me up. Yeah, Escape from New York was cool. LA, that was alright. I, I, New York though, I saw as a little kid and that was like, whoa, it was pretty creepy. There's parts about it, I mean, it's just scary. Um... All right, so now I'm gonna start doing the uh, Snake Plissken 80s movies were great. Today's Mama Z is very much like an Aztec clone. Yeah, thank you. I, I, yeah, I really, again, I always play up, or my focus, I mean, I try to play it up is the, uh, the badass aspect, you know? Um, Cause in some ways, like, everyone loves badass. You know, like, girls like a badass character and guys like badass women um sexy women are okay but maybe maybe girls want to feel badass more often than just sexy right and guys could care less either way they'll take <laughs> they'll take either one um but anyway yeah i like um focusing on the badass attitude aspect of it and just like you know i'm always thinking of like well pretend this is a movie poster of that character and how they're gonna look standing there and, and it's always like some cool person stoic face kind of pose you know so that that's that's the angle i'm going for yes another kurt russell great some great practical effects on the thing blew my mind yeah it was it was crazy that last sequence is still like the best and the mystery like you don't even know like is Giles the thing like Kurt Russell doesn't have any cold breath coming out of his mouth like what's going on who's the thing are they gonna die there or are they already dead like what's happening can't remember how old I was the first time I saw the thing yeah me too I mean I must have been like at least fourth fifth grade something like that for me um, and yeah, it was freaking scary. Just that song, it was like, doom, 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 doom. Yeah, it was like really creepy sounding. That was pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna do some, let's start throwing some shadows here, so I'm gonna move a little bit. It took me a while for inking where I used to, I used to do every line like, like that, right? And, and as an inker, you have to, uh, you have to be able to throw lines. Um, and so when you're throwing lines, sometimes you have to use like your elbow and you'll, you set it down on the table and you'll flick, right? So you can't see my elbow right now, but I'm setting it down so that I can do the flick. Um, cause it gives me control. It's, it's weird, man. As an inker, you, you use the table more than you would as a penciler because you need to have like a bold, controlled line. And so you're using a lot of your, your forearm and your elbow to get those controlled lines. And with a penciler, if you're just penciling something for someone else to ink, uh, a lot of your movement is just from your hand, like from your wrist area, you know.
Nick, I made a great looking Kurt Russell from the Thing action figure. Waiting for it to be released here in Netherlands, which is somewhere in September. That's kind of cool. NECA? Is that like a toy company? I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that up. Huh. I was so bummed with that remake. They, uh, it was basically, they just did the same story. I think it was like in, oh gosh, 99, 2000, something like that. You guys seen um there's a show on netflix called dark like a series it's kind of like a time travel show sci-fi it was pretty cool it had like three seasons it was like a german series um the first season was so good man i could not believe it and it just kind of, the other seasons were okay, but the first season was just like, wow, the premise, like, just really cool. I didn't expect it. Remakes rarely live up to the hype. I can only think of a few that were just as good as the original remakes. Rarely live up to the hype. Yeah, they do. I mean, you're right, Jason, they don't really live up to the hype. I'm trying to think, when you were, when I'm reading it, I'm trying to think of a remake that was... Um, that did, you know, uh, Yelger says the remake was okay for a remake, but made me watch the original again, but for a new or younger generation, a good way to get introduced to the classic. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I definitely loved the original more than the remake. I, mean, I wasn't as big a fan of the remake. All unnecessary remakes over the last decade or two, like cult classics, like cult classics getting trash. Give me a revisit any day. Look at Dread compared to Stallone's Judge Dread. That's how it should be done. Not all the I really, actually, that's a really good Dread. Like that was a pretty cool movie, man. That remember, like that was. I, I was I did not expect that that was a really good movie and I wonder how much of that was due to Alex Garland um, being involved because he's a really good um, filmmaker he did um, Ex Machina and uh, Annihilation those are really good no but we'll check it out when I hit the road again what you said it's called oh no it's called Dark just D-A-R-K uh, season one, it's like uh, eight to ten episodes long, one hour each. It deals like with some weird time travel stuff, but it's it's pretty cool. It, you know what? It's a good a good comparison or analogy would be. Uh, um, it's like a grown up Stranger Things. How about that? With with uh, subtitles because it's from Germany. It's still good. I liked it. Season one was awesome. The, the recent thing we were watching was uh, was Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. That was kind of funny. Evil Dead remake was very disappointing. Yeah, that I, I'm trying to. Remember. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing. I remember seeing that. You know what was good? That was really. It, it's not even a remake. Just random, just movies. <laughs> uh, Cabin in the Woods. 
you guys see that one? That one was awesome. You like it? Glow is good, dude. Uh, I was in, I was impressed. It's funny. It's like thirty minute episodes, but it's it's cool. I'm a uh, my wife and I are big Mark Maron fans, so that was w w w what uh what got me into Glow. But everybody was good at it. Really good. I, liked it. I didn't expect it, you know, like I would I didn't watch it when it came out. It, I I was so after after the fact, you know. But it was it, once I was on, I was into it. The coolest thing I watched lately. Lovecraft Country. That sh dude, that show was bonkers, but it was so good. I watched the whole thing. Have you finished it or are you still watching? You're still Cabin was great, especially sneaking in the left for dead special. <laughs> yeah, Cabin in the Woods was so like out of left field, right? Like that's everything about it. That was just like even the ending was like what? Um, it was cool. What do you guys think of this? Let's think about putting like this big shadow like finished it was great. Um Lovecraft Country. I, that was so bonkers, like the combo, right? It was like it was like um period piece the fifties and then it was like horror and like sci fi and like racial stuff and like good. <laughs> Alright, hey, what do you guys think? I'm doing I was thinking you see this uh let's see this line here? Got this line going from here all the way to like right here, and I was gonna black in the background. So everything in the back, I was just gonna make black. So it was almost like a little spotlight offset. What do you think of that? Do you think that's cool, or should I just? It'll darken up the top part of the piece. Tell me what you guys think. I'm considering it. Yeah, you like it? That works? Yogurt? Whoops. Sorry, I hit the camera. Go with it. All right, I'm going to do it. Just because you guys said it's going to happen. I'm going to squeeze this crazy brush. Hell yes, do it. We'll pop Mama's E's face. That's right. That's why I was doing it. I thought I'd pop her face out. See that? Great lines thing I like. You guys are part of the sketch process. I know what you meant. There's only one mama in this picture. Ah. Plus it'll help these little horns I give her. They'll stand out a little more. So I'm trying to do a little trick here because there's a little rim, right? But I want it to feel like a dry brush effect. So I'm trying to make the brush as dry as possible so that I can go back and do the thing here. See that? How it's kind of making like a dry brush. And then when I fill it in, it doesn't seem so uh, so neat. Still has kind of like a uh, textury feel to it. See, it's kind of a cool texture, like a couple little spots of white or whatever. Uh, it doesn't feel so um, uh, opaque, you know? I buy these pins, like they're like three bucks or whatever, right? And they, uh, 
they come with like an ink in them and I, I take the little barrel out and I just throw away all their ink and then I, uh, I have this big container of India ink and so I just squeeze this stuff right in there um, right into the, these pens and then that way I just always have like these reloadable brush pens That's how it worked out pretty cool. I'll keep it going. I seen some guy on the Sworn Nation page, Jason. He was making um, coin. Like, uh, I don't know, what are they called? Coin uh, cases or like leather? And it, it looked like the one you gave me. And I was curious, like, I didn't want to ask because I didn't want him to go, nope, it wasn't me. And I was like, it looked just like my coin. Uh... <laughs> That's a lot of ink. Do you know how many tattoos? No, man, I, I just buy that thing and I keep it. But anyway, this guy's making these coin wallets. I don't know what they were, but it was on the Sworn Nation page. And it looked like a very similar pattern to the coin thing you gave me. And I was wondering if it might have been him that made it. I wanted to thank him, but I'm, I didn't know if it was him. And he would have just been like, ah, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. Uncle Bob. Yeah, that's Uncle Bob. That's the dude that made yours. Yeah, then I'm going to go tell him. After this, I'll go onto that page and say, hey, man. I got one of them. Well, I have to say you gave it to me as a gift, but I still rock it. All right, I'm going to fill in this other big fat side. Mork says, how far ahead do you know the story of La Muerta? I remember one of your photos from a bit back of all the chapter scripts. You're talking about Bob Connors for making the leather coin pouches. P coin pouches, correct. That's what it's called. You know all the regular Sworn Nation people. <laughs> yeah, man, they're really cool. Yeah, Bob, I didn't know if it was Bob that, because Jason gifted me mine, and so I didn't know if it was from Bob or not. It looked like it was, and so I didn't want to just say thanks man and him go like I don't know what you're talking about so I knew Jason was on here and I, I figured to ask so that I could at least reach out to Bob and tell him hey I love your product or I mean your pouch thing um, yeah it's pretty cool how far ahead do you know this? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't answer your question. Yes. Uh, La Muerta, it depends, man. It took uh, these last few chapters. I would spend about seven months penciling and inking 48 pages. Um, and I'm trying to get faster with it because part of it was, you know, learning the, the look of the character, but then also penciling and inking myself. I, I wasn't the fastest in regards to that, um, I think Diego Bernard works directly from pencils. Um, but I, I, you know, I do feel like I need to get moving a little bit faster. So, like currently, I have maybe the first ten or twelve pages of the latest chapter of La Muerta, which is chapter eight. But, you know, I, I can only start once I finish up all these sketch covers. It's not, it's not a big deal. But uh, reading it gives me a chance to go, oh, look, they're in this location. I better look that up on Google Maps or pull up some reference, uh, photo reference, and then set all that stuff up. 
I always kind of work with the advantage of knowing that um, um, we had a little more leeway. We weren't like a monthly book, so I always tried my best to really fill up the pages, put as much detail and uh, backgrounds as I could in, in, in the chapter so that, you know, as people buy it, they can hang out looking at the pages longer. And I have a funny thing of putting people's names uh, from Sworn Nation on there in the book, like in the background. So a lot of times you'll see people's names in there. I only started doing it more aggressively this last book, Onslaught. Before that, I used to just put a, a bunch of the employees' names in there. Yeah, I love the bounce between Arizona and to Louisiana. Who on this, in the, in the, um, are you talking about like a, a book, Jason, or talking about something else? Sorry, maybe I just dropped in on a conversation. Oh, the coffin universe showing up in Louisiana. You know what, dude? I, I need to bug Brandy or Jimmy. Um, I don't ever get any of the books that aren't La Muerta. I mean, let <laughs> I mean, I, I me mean, rephrase that. I mean, I never ask. I should probably just go, hey, send me some of these books. Because I don't know. Like, I'd like... I'm always doing warm-up sketches of different things or things that interest me. And so... Um, I always lean like Star Wars or Western or, um, I don't know, moody, moody stuff. Like I don't draw as many comic book things cause I don't, I'm not reading as much of that stuff, but, uh, I should ask Brandy or Jimmy to send me some comps like the Lady Death and Hell Witch stuff. Cause I don't know if some of these characters that I see sometimes they'll post on, on Facebook and, uh, they, they don't say no. They've never, I just never bothered to ask, and I probably should so that I could maybe consider doing warm-up sketches of these characters because I see them, and I'm like, who's that guy with a rat? He's, like, glowing, and his eyes are glowing. What's up with that rat? And I'm like, I don't know who that is. And if I knew, maybe I would, like, consider drawing him. That's a big-time block for Lamarta, seven months. So you're pretty much in percent on Coffin Comics at the moment. No little side tracks you can check out. Um, You know what? I'm only at a place now where I've gotten busy enough between I do a lot of lately I've been doing a lot of um I've been doing a lot of covers for coffin I did um what was it for you? I have I just did like nine watercolor covers uh I did four lady death covers four lady death and hell witch covers or no I'm sorry lady death versus hell witch covers all for upcoming stuff and I can't share them yet but I've been really pushing to I haven't seen them, man, they get, they get really good cover artists for all their books, and I was getting inspired by some of these guys and gals, and I was like, shit, man, I really want to do fun covers, and so I asked Brian, I'm like, come on, man, give me, a, give me a shot, and, you know, they said, all right, well, here's the premise, and, you know, you still have to approve them, I'm like, yeah, of course, and so, anyway, they were nice enough to give me a few, uh, like, Infinity Verse covers, you know? Where I take the character and put a different theme to them and, and uh, do it in my style. But I, you know, do it mostly color. So I'm really excited for those covers to, sh to start popping up. Mork says, haha, totally ask Randy Jimmy and Hooligan to hook you up. Just got up to date on Coffin's LD and they jump around the place. Yeah, they do. Waiting for the Hell Witch Kickstarter to catch up on that story. 
Yeah, I just never think to ask them, and I'm, I don't think they would have a problem sending me comps. I'm just, I don't know of all these new characters that are popping up in the coffin verse. Mad Mike and Ratso. Okay, so that's the guy with the rat, and he's got the green eyes. Okay, Mad Mike and Ratso. That's a cool name. Yep, y'all were saying the same thing, Mike. Mad Mike and Ratso. New characters in the coffin universe. <laughs> I'm having the fans of coffin comics tell me what the new characters are. You got that book on Old Boys Kickstarter right now, too. Yeah. Hey, Suze, what's up, man? How are you? What up, Joel? Can't wait to see the new Art on La Muerta story. I'm sure it's going to be sick. I can't wait for people to check it out, man. I'm really excited. Um, thanks for joining us. We are just taking the chance to practice with the streaming. Um, I'm just trying to get a little bit more involved with that. And so we were initially trying to do today's impromptu uh, live stream to try and coordinate um, synchronized streaming for YouTube and Facebook, but uh, I didn't give uh, I didn't give us enough time to do that, so we just turned it into a regular Facebook stream today. And I was feeling good about the sketch I had started, and I was like, "Hey, man, I might as well try to do something with this thing," you know. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing. Uh, we got Mama Z looking all um, moody and brooding, uh, sitting on this crazy old throne with a bunch of skeletons around her. Um, basically, I'm just looking to hang out. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm still working per se, but I mean, I'm not like, like, shut up, guys! I'm trying to work. You know, I'm just trying to network and connect with, with you, you peeps. Hang out, you know. I'm lonely. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited about streaming, and I'm trying to get used to the idea of doing it and working. Well, while talking and stuff. That shadow thing worked out good, guys. Thanks. That was a good, uh, good idea. You guys backed up. See, now, because when I start rendering her, she'll, she'll pop even more against the black background. Oops, I keep hitting that camera. But yeah, now I can render some of this hair and fuzzy stuff on her shoulders and it'll fit right in with the rest of it. Where are you join us, joining us from, Jesus? Is it Jesus? It's got to be Jesus because it's not Jesus, right? <laughs> I, I kid, I kid. Where are you joining us from, man? Where are you at? Swornfest is coming, bro. Going with a wife for the first time. That's cool, dude. Over there. Midland. Midland, Texas. Okay, okay. That's pretty pretty humid. I'm, I'm originally from Texas. I, I grew up in Houston, Texas. I went to school in Spring, Texas. Um, then I moved to LA. Sorry, guys. I got to turn this thing a little sideways because I'm doing some weird rendering. I'll be quick. All right, see Back to back to what we're Even though I hardly draw myself anymore, I still got the eye for it. That's good, dude. Well, you know what? It's this composition. It's it's. Uh, I bet you, as a photographer, you know, you we deal a lot with composition and how things sit and rest for the eye. So, I mean, you that still applies. That still works. All right, I'm gonna try, try and work out this face. Sometimes I get nervous and I have to hold my breath. It's 
It's all in the eyes. It's all in the eyes, right? Okay, I messed up her eyes a little bit, but I'm gonna have to fix it. That's good. That's uh, problem f problem solving on the fly, right? It was so funny yesterday, I was doing the, uh, I did a sketch cover yesterday, and I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I normally like, or I mean, I the plan is to try and get as much done so that when I'm streaming, I'm not really solving any problems. I'm just interacting with you guys and, and doing little majesty lines or, you know, finesse lines or, you know, whatever like that. And yesterday, my dumbass, I was literally starting from a pencil rough, and I was having to draw her face and all this stuff, and talk, and it was like, I was sweating it, because I, I was worried, you know, like, it was going to come out like crap, and, uh, and it kind of reminded me, like, don't do that, like, always have as much of the hard stuff done, and by hard stuff, I mean, like, you know, faces and, um, hands worked out, so that you're just doing really not as busy kind of stuff you know what I mean and so I was after yesterday's stream I was like oh, it's, I don't know and so I just I kept working on it for a little bit I must have been about 20 minutes and I asked Beth like what do you think should I just restart it and she said no I think you can I think you can do it and I was able to pull it out it actually worked out okay um, but I was stupid for leaving so much uh left to on the fly which I'm not used to doing and I, I got lucky so of course today I, I don't do that and I'm I got it a little more planned out and I still give her these nasty eye bags <laughs> so I'm gonna have to wipe those out in a little bit because uh, those were not intended but that's fun I mean that's part of the, that's part of why we do it right you want to learn to roll with it and, and keep moving right Hey, Dennis. What's up, man? How are you? Thanks for joining us. Happy Saturday, right? How's your day going, Dennis? We were here talking about movies and drawing ugly faces and the thing. Everybody's talking about when they saw the thing and the warriors. Try and set this thing up so I can start throwing the fancy markers around. I have these fat ass markers I like to use. So I vary between like a three, a seven, a one, and I use these really old ad markers to uh, chilling like a villain. You're in the right place, man. I'm drawing villains over here. It looks like you're in the right place. Dun dun dun. Yeah, I gotta get rid of I get those nasty eye bags. Here, I'm gonna do it now. Screw that. Man. That looks whack. Fix that shit. Alright. See? Like it never happened. The inebriator in the house. <laughs> Are you referring to Dennis? 
Yeah, you've got to fill me in. I, I must I must learn more. What does that mean? <laughs> the inebriator. That sounds funny. All right, I'm gonna throw some fuzzy lines. Dennis, where are you joining joining us from? Where where are you located, man? Elder, did you ever North Carolina? Ooh, it's hot over there too. Oh, well, it's humid, right? It's kind of humid in, in North Carolina. Yogurt, did you ever see um, the Jindy Tart? I don't know how to say his last name. Jindy Tartakovsky uh, Clone Wars. It was like their mini animated series where it was I don't know they were like 15, 20 minutes each. It was really cool. Only by reputation. Someday I'll get over there to get my shine. <laughs> You should. We'd, we'd be happy to have you, more. I mean, I haven't even done it. Shit, I'm excited to try and do it this this next Sworn Fest. <laughs> Dennis says, it's hotter than a taco fart in North Carolina right now. Hmm, yeah, all right. That's good to know. Ah, taco fart, of course. Did he say taco for it? He sure did. Sir. He sure did. You gonna be going to Swordfest, Dennis? Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate it, man. The drawing is coming out okay. It's better than lit. Well, it better start than yesterday. Yesterday, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I got to jump the gun, and uh, but I'm learning learning as I go indeed I am awesome I, I'm looking forward to that Yeah, I'm getting to where now I'm just starting to drop random shadowy black areas throughout and see what, how they sit. I'm getting a little too uh, antsy because I'm, I'm feeling like it's almost marker time. And marker time for me is like, um, it's almost like icing on the cake. It starts to turn into like, okay, this is what we got. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it cool? You know? Hey, Taka, thanks for joining us, dude. Taka Fumi uh, Aso? Uh, uh, Taka is joining us from Tokyo. It's just gotta be like noon, maybe one o'clock for him. And I'm bringing the shine. Oh, dude, I heard about your moonshine, Dennis, and I don't, last year, or what was it, at uh, Fiend Fest? But I was so shy, I didn't know anybody. And I wasn't, I didn't really interact with anybody because I wasn't on Facebook. Dude, I only joined Facebook like a year and a half ago because Brian told me to. And I was only, I just wouldn't do the social media thing. I don't know, whatever. Um, this wasn't my thing. And uh, and then once I, once I got on there, I got acquainted with people I had already met, like like Jason. Like I, I remember, I, Jason was the first person I met at Sworn Fest. And I've known him ever since. And there was another person I met there, same thing, but I thought, in hindsight, I looked back and I was like, shit, man, had I met more Jasons or whatever, I would have been hanging out with all these people. And like, if I had been on Facebook and on the Sworn Nation page, I would have probably been having a blast. But see, now this time, now that I know Dennis is Mr. Shine, <laughs> and he's going to be there, I have to try this uh, epic shine that everybody had been talking about and I missed out on because I was a wallflower, you know? It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. Too many shows to watch. Too little time. How are you, Taka? I hope you're having fun. 
7.40 a.m. in Tokyo. Woo! That's pretty early, Taka. Hopefully you're still in bed and you're just like watching me from the phone or your laptop or something. I didn't really know anybody either, but I made a lot of new friends. See, but you're, you're cool and smart. You knew that you didn't know anybody. And you're like, fuck this, I'm going to make it work. I was like, mm, I'm a retard. But I met Jason, so I didn't do too bad. And Jason's a cool guy. He's a pretty cool dude. Did you drive up with the guys, um, Dennis, when you went there? Did you go in your car or did you fly out? Are you going to do the same? Are you driving out? Jason Hart, my road dog. So you guys drove up together then, I'm guessing, because of what Jason said. Oops, sorry. I keep forgetting to make sure you guys can get a clear view of this. All right, that's better. Sorry. <laughs> I keep moving. All right, that's better. As far as I know, we all still drive in a sworn together. That's cool, man. Yeah, save on flight, right? I'm usually more the wallflower type as well. Yeah, G yeah, I mean, dude, same here, Yelger. I just get real intimidated. I have to drive out there. Can't bring shine on a plane. <laughs> You're like, that's the only reason I'm driving is so I can bring this, this barrel, <laughs> this barrel of moonshine. No, I'm laughing now, but watch. I'm going to be the first one in line when I see you. You see me? We'll draw for shine. How's that? What flavors did you make? Or like, I, maybe I was imagining it. I heard there was like, was 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 there like apple pie? No, what was the flavor I thought I heard? I, what? Maybe I thought I heard apple pie. I don't know. I thought that's what I heard. You had made an apple pie flavor. All right, I'm gonna try and render the heck out of this skeleton. <laughs> Shit, brother, I'll find you. All right, if you say so, just if you say so. Sounds cool. A buddy took me to a uh, barbecue place. I forgot the name of it in Arizona that specializes in like different types of moonshine and. Uh, I just couldn't get over how good it was. It just tasted like whatever they put in it. You need that on a cardboard placard, Joel. We'll draw for shine. You shit. Don't tempt me, Mark. I might just have it when I go over there so that Dennis can find me. <laughs> How embarrassing. Look, this poor man, he's, this alcoholic needs moonshine. <laughs> he can't draw without it. But I'm ready to sit in the cell with him every day. <laughs> yeah, he makes all bootleg with him. That's crazy. That's cool, man. Well, that's going to be a highlight. Yesterday I was mentioning how I'm going to do... Maybe some of you were here and heard it, but I, I don't know. But Yesterday I was mentioning I want to do an art drop at the Sworn Fest where... Like, what is it, two days worth of uh, convention this? So for two days, I was going to hide like a couple sketches per day somewhere around the convention center and then like uh, take pictures of the general area that said hidden sketches is, is, is in. 
and then you know uh, post it via social media so that people can I don't know find it just for you know something fun I don't know if people would dig that kind of thing why wouldn't they it's free art right I got a few Uncle Dirty Shine bottles on top of the fridge right now. Jealous. So jealous. I'm going to steal your shine, Jason. No, maybe I'm all obsessed with it because I've never had it. Even though I've, I've, I've had it in Arizona. Maybe it's because everybody's talking about it at the count, at, at Sworn Fest and I didn't see it. You know, like when you want something you can't have kind of deal. I got a feeling that, oh damn, that's epic. I won't be there so you could totally hide one in an envelope with my address on it, right? I'll do that. I'll send you one more. It'll probably be all busted and like just glass with like dehydrated alcohol everywhere. Same, man. <laughs> Joker. Same here. Give me one of them shines. What's a good convention by you, Yelger, in, in the Netherlands? Do, do, do comic creators come out to you, your neck of the... I mean, obviously they do, but when they do, what is the convention they would usually attend uh, by you, if there is such a thing? Oh, I meant the art drop. Ah, ha, ha. He's like, nah, screw your moonshine. To hell with your moonshine. Give me art. What chapters of the book of La Muerta do you have, Mark? Like, do you have like the latest one or the older ones? I think you said you had a couple. I just didn't remember which stories you had. Oh shit, guys, it's almost marker time. Marker time is like when the majesty lines start to come together. Everything looks like an idea until the marker shows up and then it's like, oh, it starts to really come together. <laughs> if it works. <laughs> I'm doing good on the meds. I have without shine for now. All right, I got you, Mark. You're probably right. Most part of my shine is when I played in cover bands. Oh, there you go. That's cool, Yelger. She's incredible. Hey, Kat, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just Mama Z, talking horror movies and moonshine over here with everybody. Only retaliation as the homage. Thanks to your excitement, I back everything on the latest Kickstarter, though. Book trade paperbacks. Oh, cool, dude. That's awesome. Well, I'll definitely have to pick your ear about what you liked about it. If there's anything cool that you enjoyed uh, in the story, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it's always good to just get feedback, right? Um, and me, personally, as the artist, I don't... I only find out through you guys how things went, you know? And... Um, Maybe like on the Sworn Nation thing. Like they don't review our comics. Like I never, I'm always trying to go to like comic sites or whatever to see if they'll check out the coffin stuff. And they don't really seem to pick up on it. And, you know, it could just be that it's not their cup of tea or something, you know? Um, but we're definitely, we definitely always end up feeling like an indie comics company, right? Even though we're lucky to have you guys because you guys make it all worthwhile. Dutch Comic Con, first Comic Con that ever started here and still the best and the biggest. 
Huh, that's pretty cool. Let's check that out. Dutch Comic Con. Is it like a three day comic convention? I promised I'd let you know as soon as the digital. Of course, yeah, as soon as the digital's come through, I'll be straight into reading. Damn, Mark. Mark is serious. I'm going to read the hell out of these books. Yeah, I, dude, I, I sit in my cave for months at a time before I hear about what people think of our comics. And like I said, no one ever reviews them. Maybe that's better. Maybe <laughs> when I hear what the reviewers say about my art. This guy sucks. What do you think? Oh, well, let me finish these skeletons and then I'll go into markers. Sorry. I'll put this back so everybody can see. Yeah, I'm going to render the skeleton real quick and then these little things and then I'll go right into markers and, and we'll, we'll start having fun. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Did you guys, uh, were you guys into uh, any of the Marvel shows that came out? Like Winter Soldier, or I'm sorry, Falcon Winter Soldier, WandaVision. They were all okay for me. I didn't hate them, but they were just kind of like, eh. Nothing too uh, memorable or, it wasn't bad, I just. I think I was enjoying other shows a little bit better. Alright, I'm trying to hurry so I can get some markers going before. Well done. Loki was good. Yeah, Loki was good, Jason. It was okay. I mean, I didn't, like I said, I didn't hate it. There was some really, I felt like they brushed over a lot of certain things, but I definitely felt like everything we we're watching was going to be a really big impact on things in the future for Marvel. I mean, like, honestly, with all the stuff they just introduced in that show, like, anything can happen. Two day comic convention, although most people come to see the actors and stuff. I worked as a volunteer at the first edition. Last year was supposed to be their anniversary, but got postponed due to the pandemic. Yeah, Yelger, I think everybody's conventions like that. But you know what? Like you said, I mean, the actors and stuff are such a big part of conventions now. Maybe I'm just old. It's not my thing, you know? But they wouldn't do it if people weren't into it, right? Like, they obviously, somebody's buying those photo ops and all that stuff, so. The alligator. <laughs> yeah, the alligator was pretty cool, man. The Loki, Loki character. Loki Gator. Well, because you're from Louisiana, so. Jason's all, I know him. He lives down the street. WandaVision was weird in a pleasant way. I found that show the most interesting so far. WandaVision was kind of wild, man. It was uh, it was neat what they were trying to do. But in the end, like, I mean, honestly, she's the most powerful, well, she's one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel U. Wanda, that is. I like that they touched on that and that she probably could have destroyed Thanos. I saw him in my yard, <laughs> Jason. Shit, if I saw that alligator look in my yard, I'd be running the other way. All right, what do you guys think? Time for markers, or should I darken anything yet a little more? What do you guys think? Because now it's going to be marker time. Let me throw some markers around. It's 
So like I'll probably, if I do go in markers, I'll probably keep this background like the lightest and then kind of darken certain things. Ooh, you know what would be cool? Is if like I darkened like from here up and left this like white, like non-marker. Marker this, because you know how there's this like circular thing behind her? So what if since she's in front of that thing, like this same shadow would hit her like on her, the top of her boobs, you know? That could be kind of cool. What do you guys think? Yay? Nay? Oh shit, Mr. Meow gets back to watch and judge my art. This is not very good. You're wasting your time, Dad. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Hey, Jesus. DC and Marvel okay, but now indies are becoming more popular like Coffin Comics and Image to me and the stories are more real. Wish I'm left that would be monthly. Oh man, I know. You know, I, I don't think I could... <laughs> I don't think I could pull that out. But I, I can. I, I, I gotta work on it. I can do it. Monthly would be tough though, dude, because like the, all the work I put into the book, like... I feel like I would rather La Muerta be um, story arcs. So do you remember, I don't know if you ever read Hellboy, but like for a while Hellboy used to just be story arcs where he would do a four to six issue miniseries and then he'd go away for a couple, you know, months or whatever. And then he'd have another one. Jogger, Yelger says, do it. You're talking about the shadow thing, right? That I was talking about earlier. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm just because I'm, I'm learning to throw this W1 around. All right, we're going to try it, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to blame Yelger. So it's his fault. He said to do it. I'm just kidding, Yelger. I wouldn't do that. It's not as evident now, but it will be more evident once I uh, do the three. Ooh, I'm going to copy the same circle here. Watch. Mm, see, yeah, going with the I go in with the, the uh, W one first, and then once I see how it sits, I'll go in with a darker one and make it continue so it looks as bold, you know. It'll all make sense soon enough. Well, yeah, Jesus, Jesus says, cool, man, it must be hard, especially because the book, wait, especially because the book, when it comes out, you can see all the hard work. Yeah, no, I think I, I just like, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, I feel like the book, the way it comes out, I could even, I could even do bi-monthly, the, I just think that the schedule being that way allows me to put enough into the art so that as if it were to sit on a shelf next to a monthly book, the hope is that you know there is enough going on in there where you would say oh well shit there's more art in there or you know more work in it more love i want to pick that up i mean that's the mentality behind it you know so it's like if i were monthly i wouldn't be able to put as much detail into the work you know personally um but like i said monthly schedule could be cool I mean a bi-monthly, sorry, not monthly. Bi-monthly schedule could be cool. I think the thing with La Muerta that I would like, I wish we could do, I mean, I don't think that it's off the table, but I guess I've never asked the guys, but like uh, to alternate like kind of between <clears throat> like supernatural stories and then, you know, urban crime noir stories, which we kind of already do that anyway. Mike, Mike is really good about kind of steering us in that direction. Um, Brian's been a little bit more involved lately. He's always uh, involved in the books, but like, it feels like uh, 
for a while it was mostly, you know, Mike suggesting stuff. All right, let's see. I'm going to try a little bit darker now. Hey, Colonel. My dog is showing up. He's uh, letting me know he disapproves. Get a little left that one shot written up. Infinity Deverse spreads wide. You mean like <clears throat> me proposing one personally, like to to Coffin Comics? Man, I wish you guys could check out the, the story we were working on before we jump back on to chapter 8. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, honestly, that's not a bad idea, Mark. I have to ask El Jefe. See what he says about it. He's pretty cool about all that stuff. Brian's easy to work with. I have to say, man, I worked at DC. I worked at um, Top Cow and Wildstorm, and uh, I can't help but feel like I've learned the most working at Coffin Comics with Brian and the guys. Those other places were a lot of fun, but I think I've had more opportunities for growth at Coffin just because I get to try more stuff. Um, and uh, it's worked out awesome, you know, work with fun people, and it's been a dream come true, man. Spend enough time drawing here. You must have some great need to. <laughs> I know, right? I had apple pie, honey, cherry, and straight. Damn, th those are the flavors you had, Dennis? Apple, Dennis says, I had apple pie, honey, cherry, and straight. I don't know if that's straight. I mean, like, no flavor. And I bought some homemade mead, too. Damn. I like them, but I didn't love them. Hmm. That's, um, delicious. Say, hey, Jason Hart, I got a bunch of cherries and strawberries soaking in shine. They're going to be straight up evil by Swernfest. Damn, that sounds amazing. Brian has some at HQ. Wow, that's cool. Wow. Who are we? Let's just call it Shinefest. I kid, I kid.
right, I'm just starting to add some effects and stuff here because I'm almost wrapped up. What do you guys think? Anything I should add? Anything look weird? So what I'm doing here is I, I squeeze this really hard and I get the barrel filled up with the juicy black and then I uh, I hit it against this thing to uh, create like splatter. Almost done. What days do you guys get into uh, the convention when you drive up? Do you make it so that you arrive day of or like the day before or? Thanks, thanks, Yogurt. Hold on, let me get my wife. What time is it for you, Yogurt? Is it uh one AM? Thanks, Taka. Thank you so much, buddy. Yes, 1 a.m. That was a guess. I'm trying to hurry so I don't make you fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, like, Finish your sake drawing so I can go to bed. No, I don't sleep until 3 a.m. Oh, wow, how do you do that? That's crazy. Maybe because you're a young guy and you're like full of vim and vigor, ready to take on the day. You're not an old man like me. Wait, how old are you, Yelger? Sorry. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm guessing. Making stuff up. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess how old Yelger is. I'm going to say. I'm going to say Yelger is 36. That's just a guess. Jason Hart. Dennis, I'm out of peach and blueberry. I don't care as long as more of that come to Denim Springs on the way to Arizona. Oh, show offs. Talking about your fancy moonshine. Mr. Big Shots with the moonshine. I guess I'd be talking about moonshine too if I had it. Hell yeah. You know I'm dusty off some to you. I know. It's more fun drinking with you guys. Because then it's all about the experience, right? Because then we can go, remember? Remember when we were at Sword Fest and everybody was drinking? We get all shit-faced. I'm 40. I used to sleeping late. I usually sleep around 3 a.m. to get up at 6.30 a.m. on work days. Damn, dude. I can't do that. I don't know how you do it, yogurt. 
I was pretty far off on your age, guessing your age. I guessed from your pictures, I, I thought, well, he looks like he's a young dude, you know? He can't be that old. And you're not that old. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I told you way back. First beer on me, Jason says. Of course, Horace. Like I said, you're the first dude I met at Swornfest that I still keep up with. And it, I learned my lesson. I was like, I should have been hanging out with everybody. That could have been making cool friends all along. But that's all right. Now I know better. And so the next time, it's going to be even more fun. It's cool, though. Um, earlier, somebody mentioned how uh, Jesus was saying how he feels like, you know, indie comics is on the rise again. And that, like, you know, Marvel and DC, or for whatever reason, he thought they felt like they weren't just... I don't know, it's not as like they used to be. Um, and that's neat. It's like this weird pendulum swing, right? I mean, remember back when the image days were big and indie comics were popular? Maybe it's happening again. I don't know. It'd be cool if it did. If I shake my beard off, I need to ID myself when I want to buy cigarettes. See what I mean, dude? You probably look way younger than you, you your age. So, I mean, I just thought you were a lot of, I thought you were a lot younger. You lucky bastard. Good genes. I don't know, what do you guys think? I'm thinking it's done. Do you guys think it's done? Should I add anything before we wrap up? I've been going for almost two hours. Does anything look weird? Should I add some shadow or texture or render to anything? Do you guys have any suggestions? Suggestions? Here, look, I'm gonna add a little white spot there. Curse of my Indonesian heritage. Look young forever. Curse. <laughs> Give me a break, dude. That's awesome. Good for you. Oh, that's cool. Look, it's like a little hot spot. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna do a little horn stuff too. Awesome. Thanks, Jesus. Thanks, Mark. She does look okay, right? It doesn't look like I drew her. It looks like somebody who knew what they were doing drew her. Hey, that guy, he knows what he's doing. Hold on. There we go. Sign it off. You're good on this one, man. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Mom's you looking amazing. Awesome, bros. Um, hey, well, honestly, thank you so much, guys. Uh, just another, I don't know. I'm not seeing no... <laughs> You're right. You know what? You're right. Let me do that. Thank you for reminding me of this. I'll do that. You guys can witness the signature before I head out and leave you guys to enjoy your weekends. Oh, wait, we'll put one more here. There we go. Joshua Maine. Hey, look who joined us right as we were wrapping up. How you doing, Joshua? Thanks for joining us. We're all hanging out talking comics and moonshine and sworn fest and, I don't know, everybody's just hanging out. Uh, thanks for uh, joining this impromptu live stream. I was just about to wrap up. Um, we've been going for about an hour and 45 Uh was working on a Mama Z. Here, I'll put a couple of shadowy things for you so you can enjoy, be part of the process, right? Um, we were doing a Mama Z sketch cover. Uh, it was just a quick thing. I was trying to uh, take advantage of uh, learning how to stream simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook. So I just decided to put up a stream today, you know? Um, there it is. Yeah, Jason, there it is. What do you, hey, what do you guys think? Every Thursday, you think like three... No, I'm sorry. What do you think of like uh, Thursday streams, like 4.30? I mean, I know everybody's got their own thing, but as a general rule of thumb, do you think like once a week is cool, like for a stream, like in the evening? Really enjoy these streams. Thanks, Joel. I enjoy hanging out with you guys. We get to fart around and talk comics and shit. Thanks again, Joel. See you next time, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure to announce them. I'm going to try and do them once a week, late in the week, maybe Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, something like that. 
Um, Thursdays, I'm down. All right, cool, Jesus. I'm going to do it. You know what? I, for some reason, I came. Uh, thank you, Joshua. I was having a blast ch chatting with my bros here and, and just doodling. Uh, thank you, Taka. Thanks for coming out. Like I said, I'll be doing these on Thursdays. I'll post a note on Facebook and see what happens. Um, everybody have a great weekend. Yeah, Yogurt. Thanks for uh, joining me. And you were here from the very get. And thank you, Jason. I appreciate it, homie. Uh... Once a week would be awesome. I block out my calendar. Oh, cool. All right. Well, then, like I said, I'll post it on Facebook, uh, the announcement of when, and then we'll just wing it. I'll do it once a week, and you'll find me here. And if I miss you one week, I'll always be back here, and we can do the same old thing, talk shit and have some laughs and whatever. All right, you guys, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for joining me. Uh, have a good one. Bye.